Hey guys, what's up? It's Fern. Thank you so much for joining me for another planty video. So a while ago, I asked y'all for some video requests and you came through. So thank you so much to everyone who submitted an idea because it really helps me out. So today's video was one of those video requests and I'm so excited because I was actually thinking about doing an updated wishlist video anyways because it's just a fun video to film. Who doesn't like talking about plants that they want and plants that they love and looking at photos of stunning plants? Honestly sounds like a great time to me, so that's exactly what we're gonna be doing. I wouldn't say that I spend a lot of time actively looking for plants to add to my wish list, but as I'm sure a lot of you guys do, I have a notes app that I just kind of add to whenever I come across a plant that I really like or, you know, see photos or... Yeah, I just, it just seems to be ongoing at this point and I've just kind of accepted that. And I don't really view wishlist plants as like, once they go on my wishlist, I'm actively shopping for them or I like need to have them or anything. It's just kind of a compilation of plants that if I had the opportunity to get them, would I? Probably. But it's not like keeping me up at night, you know? Because I have so many plants already and I'm very content and just grateful for my collection. Oh my goodness. I think that my El Choco has spider mites. Oh, that's annoying. I'm noticing spider mites on a few of my plants right now in here. Well, that's a problem for later. Right now we are talking about wishlist plants. Should I be sitting here and daydreaming about all the plants that I want when I am not even taking the best care that I could of all the plants that I already have? Probably not, but here we are. So I have a couple philodendron, a couple alocasia, begonia, hoya, and then a couple other random ones. So I'll start with the philodendron because y'all know I am a philodendron girly. So this first one that I'm gonna talk about is my newest obsession and that is the philodendron Jose Bono. And it's so kind of funny that I'm really into this plant now because I've known of this plant and like seen it around for years, but I have never felt the need to own it until recently. I am just seeing them pop up and like, why was I not into this plant until now? Because they are so stunning. Like who needs a variegated monstera when you have philodendron Jose Bono? I'm serious, they are that nice. I'm looking at photos, by the way, as I'm talking. I love the elongated leaf and the variegation is just so stunning. It seems to really vary. Some of them have more of like a splashy variegation and then some of them are more sectoral, but it looks, I've never owned this plant, but from what I can see, it looks like the variegation comes in more white and then it kind of fades to like a greenish or yellowish variegation, which I really dig. Like. Yeah, I just think that it is so gorgeous. I would love to get even just a small one of this plant and then get it on a pole and watch it size up. I think that that would be so satisfying. And yeah, I'm just, mm, everything about these leaves, I'm obsessed. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm already losing my voice and we're on the first plant. Yeah, I'm obsessed, love it. I'm probably gonna hold out until I find one that I really like because I've definitely regretted when it comes to variegated plants, buying one where the variegation isn't great and then just kind of, not being as happy with it as I could be. So I am going to wait it out uh, for that and also for the prices to come down because I feel like they will. These are starting to hit plant stores where I am right now, but they're still like $150. So I'm just gonna hang tight and wait. I mean, if I came across like the perfect one, would I buy it? Possibly, but I'm just gonna try to wait. And in the meantime, I will just be admiring everyone else's on Instagram because wow, there are some phenomenal specimen out there right now. All right, so the second philodendron that I have on this list and the last philodendron I have on this list, surprisingly, I only have two, but it is philodendron patriciae, which is almost like, almost like a pendant leaf, at, not anthurium, philodendron. It has a very long leaf and the, when it climbs, the way that the leaves hang down is just so satisfying. I love it. Y'all know I love um, a pendant or any just like elongated leaf. It's just, yeah, it's a look that I really like. Even for example, even for example, my Anthurium bockery here beside me, this is considered a semi-pendant leaf, I believe, and I still love it so much, even though it's not fully like the completely hanging down, like it's kind of just 
they're kind of just like long leaves but it still gives that strappy vibe and I'm just I love it so much Oh my god, Tyler has a huge one from Rousseau Plant Care. I'll put the reel on the screen. It's absolutely immaculate. I cannot fathom having this plant. Like, I would simply croak. Um, anyways, yeah, I'll put photos of all these plants on the screen. But yeah, the Patricia is not only gorgeous because it has that, like, hanging kind of pendant leaf vibe, but because the coloring can be a really beautiful, dark, deep green. And it also gets, like ruffles ridges I don't know what the word is but you'll see what I mean it's almost like ribbed um it's very textured and beautiful and wow these actually used to be like really rare and cost a pretty penny and you could really only get them if you were like importing or something like that but now they're becoming a lot more accessible a lot more available and yeah I'm living for it because I feel like I might actually be able to get my hands on one of these one day which would be so nice because yeah, they're just so stunning. Oh, I would have such a fun time growing this plant. I really hope I am able to get one one day and we can watch it grow together because I really feel like this is a special philodendron. Yeah, so those are the two philodendron that I have been pretty obsessed with lately. And I feel like that's a good pair to have on the wish list because they're ki they kind of complement each other. One of them is variegated. One of them is just like a deep lush green, like stunning. So hopefully one day, because y'all know how I am with my philodendron. I just can't get enough of them. Okay, now we're going to move on to alocasia. And I thought that I had mentioned this alocasia in my last wishlist video, but I watched it and I don't think I did unless I missed it. Um, so hopefully I'm not repeating myself. I know I've mentioned it in other videos, but this alocasia... Oh, there's a hawk outside the window. Um, I've mentioned before in videos because I've been admiring this alocasia for a few months now, but it's alocasia dragon's breath or heterophylla, I believe. Um, I'm gonna have to look up hetero, yeah, he heterophylla or heterophylla, um, which is a stunning, long, pointy leafed um, silver alocasia. And first of all, I'm having an alocasia moment, I'm having an anthurium moment. Also having a begonia moment, a pinguicula moment, I just, plants are freaking cool, okay? That's all I have to say for myself. But anyways, this alocasia is so phenomenal, and I think that these are kind of hitting stores a little bit more now too, which is nice because, you know, the more popular a plant gets, the more likely the price is going to come down, and the more likely we'll all be able to get our hands on it. So I love to see that. But yeah, it's just, it's a really cool alocasia. My love of silver plants, I feel like whenever I see a really silver plant, I just need it. It pretty much automatically goes on my wish list. And yeah, it's just gorgeous. I really feel like I don't have anything like this in my alocasia collection. I tend to have more like round leafed alocasia. I don't think I have anything that has more of like the sharp angles like this. Um, there are a lot of alocasia that kind of have this shape, but I just don't own any of them. So I would love to add this one particularly to my collection. And the leaves can get really big too, which is cool. So this one I'm definitely keeping my eye out for, even if I was able to get like corms from someone or something, that would be just grand. I'm slowly building up my alocasia collection and yeah, I just love them so much. So that is the first one. And then the second one that I have on my wish list is actually one that used to be on my plants, one of my plants I dislike videos because I just did not get the appeal of it. I did not like the appearance of it before, but now suddenly, I don't know, like, I don't know. Sometimes my mind just changes. I guess I see different photos of it and I just fall in love. So the next alocasia on my wish list is the alocasia Watsoniana, which I used to say reminded me of a duck foot. And I think it's because it looks almost like the sinus is like kind of webbed if you look at it. And it's just the way that the veins are because the veins don't go like up along the very top of the sinus. I don't know. Hopefully you'll see what I mean when I put the photos. So that used to just like really put me off. But lately I've been seeing photos of them and they look like, I don't know if they are velvety, but in the photos they look velvety or they look like they at least have like a sheen to them. Um, and I don't know if that's true or not. But yeah, the like texture of them just looks so gorgeous. And they also are like a really nice deep green, which I love. Love a really dark green leaf. Like, oh my goodness. Yeah, they're so gorgeous. 
I feel like it's another one that's really different from all the other alocasia or even all of the other plants in my collection and it would really stand out and just offer something a little bit more unique so yeah I just I don't know I'm just I'm obsessed lately like wow it is just so cool and when the leaves come in like how fresh they look oh my goodness there's nothing like a fresh big leaf and when they have that really like soft look to them and they're like lighter and then you get to watch them darken oh my goodness yeah definitely on my wish list especially because they can get so massive just looks like a really cool plant and you don't see them a ton either like they're not like popular popular they're just you know you see them around um but i don't see them like they're definitely not as common as like the cupria or the dragon scale or something like that okay let's move on to begonia begonias are my love i wish that more people were into begonia <laughs> but sadly not everybody is and i understand because some of them can be a little bit more finicky but for me i guess i'm just willing i mean a lot of them aren't as finicky as people think but for the ones that are i guess i'm just like willing to put in the work because i love them so much and the first one on my list is one that's a pretty straightforward cane begonia um, and I actually, this went on my wish list after I saw this in uh, the window of a shop when I was downtown. I was walking by and I had to double take and just stand in front of the store and stare in their window because I could not believe the begonia that was in there. And um, I think, and I'm pretty sure that it was begonia lucerne. So I had to go ahead and put begonia lucerne on my um, wish list. I'm just typing it up right now so I can look. Oh my goodness, yeah, I just love it so much. So it's a cane begonia, it has polka dots. Um, there's a whole group of begonias that kind of have this like uh, look to them, the whole angel wing shape and the polka dots, but they're not big polka dots like the maculata, so it's a lot different than that one. And they can get really big as I saw in the, um, in the shop window and that's when I was just really like, wow, I need this begonia. Oh, is it Lucerne or Lucerna? I think it's Lucerna. I think it's Lucerna. Okay. Um, anyways, yeah, it is just like, oh, it's so gorgeous. It's so gorgeous. Oh, like, are you kidding me? Are you actually kidding me? Yeah, love how big they can get. Love the red backs. Uh, the blooms are adorable as well. I just want big begonias. That is what I want. And my Thurstonii is getting big now, which is really nice. Look at her, gorgeous, stunning. But I really want more just like easy care um, cane begonias because I find so much joy in growing them. And I just think that they are some of the most beautiful plants that we can grow in our homes. In my humble opinion, love the leaf shape, love the growing pattern, just everything about them is so stunning. And something about this lucerna it looks like almost like fluffy or something like it just has like a really light and like feathery vibe about it oh it's so pretty i love it so much so yeah that is the first begonia on my on my wish list i don't think that this is one that would be expensive or anything if i came across it i'd probably just buy it i just haven't come across it yet and the second begonia on my list is one that is on a little bit more on the rare side and that is begonia chlorosticta and this looks to me like it's a terrarium begonia kind of vibe, but I don't actually know because I've never grown one before, but it just, it looks like a terrarium begonia, but of course it's so pretty because, oh my goodness, all terrarium begonia are just like, you know, they just do something to me. I love them. So this has like lime, lime green polka dots and the edge of the leaf with like a really dark, background of the leaf to really make those colors pop right off of it. It just looks so stunning. It looks poisonous. I love begonias that look poisonous and just have like a really crazy look to them. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's just, it's such a unique one. And I can definitely see this not being for everyone because it's funny because I don't, I'm not really someone that's into like loud patterns. Like I know I've talked about before some of the new varieties of syndapsis and stuff that have come out. It's just, they're not my favorite. But when it comes to begonias, like, I love the loud patterns. Like, you know, the louder and the wilder and the crazier, the better. So this is definitely one that falls into this category. I really don't know much about it other than the fact that I just love the way it looks. So I'd have to do further research. This is not one I would just, like, impulse buy without knowing more about it and, like, how to care for it because I, you know, wouldn't want it to just croak on me. 
Although I have been keeping my Darth Vader Yana hybrid alive for a while now, like a almost a couple of years and it's died on me like four times and it just keeps coming back, thank God. But yeah, anyways, that's the second begonia. Okay, and then we're moving on to Hoya and both of the Hoyas that I've chosen are kind of like a similar vibe actually. And the first one is Hoya Undulata which I actually used to have like a couple of years ago I had one and it just it promptly died on me and I don't know why um I remember trying to revive it and it just wouldn't it wouldn't revive and since then I've actually heard that this can be a begonia that's more on the hard side to care for so so far that is true for me but of course I want to try again because well you'll see the photos on the screen it is absolutely stunning it has that really like crusty absurd look that some Hoya do that look like it's like, I don't know, dead or dying or like covered in barnacles or something. Like they just look so strange, which I love. Um, but not only do I love the foliage on this, I love the blooms. Like the blooms are so cool. They're really unique. I definitely don't think I have any Hoya that produce blooms like this. There's some photos that people have posted where the plant's a little bit bigger so you can see like all the stunning foliage and then also the like big stunning blooms as well. The blooms are almost like claws opening up and they're like pretty huge too. Oh my goodness, yeah, they're actually quite massive. Oh, it's just such a cool plant. I'm pretty sure there's different varieties of this. Like I feel like the one I had was Undulata green leaf, I wanna say. So it didn't really have this like really um, weird splashy look that some of them have. But I don't know, I'd have to do more research into the varieties before I purchase one. But yeah, I'm definitely a really big fan of this plant uh, for both the foliage and the blooms. So that's definitely, you know, a Hoya win and a Hoya that needs to go straight on the wish list. And then the second Hoya is Hoya clementiorum, which... Um, this one, I really love the foliage and that's why I want it. And I actually have no idea what the blooms look like, but it has that really like, almost has that like crusty, veiny look again. It looks very prehistoric. I don't think I really have any Hoya at the minute that have like this type of leaf. And some of them look really gray toned too with like the splashy variegation thrown in there. And oh my goodness, like they are just stunning. I really love just like the crusty, veiny looking kind of vibe. The blooms are cute, but they're not anything super unique. They almost remind me of like Hoya Chicken Farm blooms because they have the red and the yellowish. I wonder if Hoya Chicken Farm is a hybrid of one of these weird crusty begonias or Hoya because it kind of has a similar look. Yeah, honestly, just a stunning Hoya. And I've seen it pop up on my Instagram feed a couple of times recently. And I've, I've been influenced. The, oh my gosh. Okay, this is so weird. Yesterday I was walking around my neighborhood and there was like seven or eight. I think that they're hawks. They're, I mean, they could be eagles that, because there's different types of eagles that aren't bald eagles. They're not bald eagles. They could be brown eagles. I don't know what they are. They're some sort of birds of prey and they're literally just circling. And yesterday there was like eight of them just circling above and now they're doing it again right now. It's so bizarre. Okay, yeah, not sure why the birds are just out and about so much lately, but they are. They're doing something. Anyways, where were we? Talking about Hoya clementiorum. I think I was pretty much done with that one. Um, yeah, really cool looking Hoya that I would love to have one day. Okay, and then next I just have a couple of pings, and I honestly don't know. These have been sitting on my wish list, and I went to look them up because... I feel like somebody suggested these on an older video and I saved the suggestions because I wanted to buy pings this spring, which I think I'm still gonna be buying pings, but I'm probably gonna be doing it in June. But the first one is Pinguicula Wesser, Weiser. I'm not really sure, I'll have the name on the screen, but this is a ping that can sun stress pink really nicely. And that's what I've been wanting are pings that just are different fun colors. And mine is actually the one that I have right now is starting to sun stress pink and it is so, so cute. So I can't wait to get a couple of more that come in, you know, like fun colors because these ones actually look like they can get like quite pink. 
which is very fun. I just love that. I want to get like honestly a whole bunch of pings. Like I'm a little obsessed with the whole vibe of just having a bunch of them or like having a cute little dish and like planting a whole lot of them in there. I would love to do that. Um, apparently they push out babies pretty frequently too. Mine hasn't yet, but I haven't even had it for a year. So it's still like relatively young. But yeah, I just love this one because of the pink. That's the sole reason that it went on my wish list. And the next one is insane looking. The next one, I have two pings on my wish list right now. And the next one is Pinguicula Cyclosecta. And this one is purple, you guys. And it looks so, so cool. Oh my gosh, I'm looking at it now. And it looks unreal. Like, are you kidding me? I cannot believe that there is a plant that looks like this. <laughs> Is this not the coolest looking ping you've ever seen? And you know what's great about Pinguicula is that, I mean, so far, like I only have one, but it seems very easy care. And they also serve the purpose of catching fungus gnats. Like what more could you ask for in a plant? Uh, and they look freaking adorable. And they put out little flower blooms. Like this is honestly the perfect plant in my opinion. So, so cute. Um, hopefully these ones that I'm choosing aren't like way more difficult to care for than the one I have or something like I really really hope not because the pink and this purple is like oh my goodness perfect this one looks like a flower already like just the foliage looks like a flower because it's so purple and pretty yeah I'm definitely going to be checking Brad's Greenhouse um, which is a local carnivorous plant seller here so I'm going to be checking their website and probably placing a ping order like I said in June so let me know if you'd be interested in an unboxing if you are maybe I'll get a couple extras just to just as an excuse to make it a little bit fun um, and then we can even like plant them together and everything and yeah let me know if you want ping content because I would love to do it and then the last one is just a random plant. It doesn't fit in into any of the other um, groups that I've already shared. And that is Passiflora trifasciata, which this has been on my wish list for a couple of months now. Um, well, I've seen it for a while, but I never really had it on my wish list until recently. But yeah, I'm just like, okay, okay, I see you and I need you. So this one is just like the cutest little vining plant. The um, leaves look like little like duck feet or something. Again, I don't know what is with like the duck foot theme today, but, um, but it's adorable. And apparently it grows like a weed. It's super easy to grow and it just gives such a cool vibe like to have it like climbing on something or vining on something um, or trailing. They're just gorgeous and it looks like they can get pink as well, which like sign me up. Yeah, these just look like so precious. I would absolutely love to grow one. The thing is that I never see these around. Like I don't think I've ever seen one for sale in Canada. That being said, I've never looked for one, but I've also never seen one. So um, yeah, not sure how difficult it would be for me to find this plant. If any of y'all have seen them for sale in Canada, let me know. But oh yeah, they're just adorable. I love them so much. They almost give like an ivy look which is really cool. And I love the look of Ivy, love the vibe of Ivy, but Ivy is, well, one, extremely invasive and they really like shouldn't even be for sale here. So I just like don't wanna buy them for that reason. But the second reason is that apparently Ivy is like a massive spider mite magnet. Like they always get spider mites and just croak. So, I mean, not always, cause I'm sure people are gonna jump in the comments and say like, my Ivy is perfectly healthy, but um, that's just what I've heard, so. No Ivy for me, but I feel like this just also has this kind of like whimsical vibe to it that Ivy does. So yeah, I just, you know, this is probably actually pretty close to the top of my wish list as well. I really, really dig it. Let me know if any of y'all have it. I'm assuming it's easy care, but I would love to hear your input or experience. Um, same with any of the plants that I mentioned, of course, as always, if you want to share your experience with any of the ones that you own, I would absolutely love to hear it. But we've reached the end of my wish list, which is probably a good thing. Um, actually, there's more on my wish list. I just chose, what did I choose? 10? 10 10-ish? 10, 10 or 11 plants? Yeah, there was more, but I just chose like the top ones, I think. Like I said, it's just ongoing, but that's just part of being a plant person, I guess. There's just so many cool plants. Like, what is one to do? Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed. Like I said, leave me a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Thank you so much, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!